Hello and welcome everyone, episode 16 today, Comic Book Showcase. My name is Jamie Hari and I'm joined by Mike, Kyle, and Rab. And what's the deal with female Thor? Like, everybody seems to have an opinion on it, and quite frankly, most of the things I'm hearing on the ever-optimistic internet is bile, just absolute, you know, everyone hates on it, and there's only a few people, myself included, I'd like to think, who are sticking up for the decision and saying, hey, this isn't so bad, so what's what's the deal, internet? Like, why are you guys all hating on this? Uh, and the other big news, obviously, we're going to talk about in today's episode is uh, Falcon becoming Captain America. Again, to be clear, not the first time, uh, but a lot of change going on in the Marvel Universe, which is going to spur us to talk about gender bending and what we're going to term race lifting. And so um, what are your guys' thoughts? Mike, What do you, you, you told me earlier in an earlier conversation that you actually like this idea. They're mixing things up over at Marvel. What do you think? You know what? I really enjoy the concept of a female Thor. I mean, from the news releases that I've seen, it's not actually Thor being changed into a woman, as they've done with Loki in the past, but it's a new person taking up the helm, being able to raise the hammer, because she is worthy of being Thor, but Thor is no longer worthy. And I think that's an awesome concept, because uh, you don't see a lot of really powerful women... Uh, being able to wield Thor's hammer. I mean, multiple times Hulk has tried to lift that hammer and failed. And so it's like it's awesome to see that. And I mean, look, the promo art that they've shown, that's pretty badass. So, like, I really enjoy it. I am not a Marvel fan by any stretch. And when I say not a Marvel fan, I don't mean I hate Marvel. I just mean I'm not in tune with the Marvel Universe. But when I hear news like... People are upset that there's a female Thor when real Thor still exists somewhere. I don't understand why there's anybody at all who's that upset about it if they just don't hate the idea of a woman being Thor, which that that troubles me personally, but I still don't understand. I'm sure there are people who take issue with it who aren't blatantly misogynist, but I would like to know why why those people take issue with it and why anybody takes issue with it because it just seems to me like it's a good opportunity to see a woman in a role that's different than usual and seeing the character of Thor that we know portrayed differently. Hopefully. So uh, if I can you know, posit a, a thought, and that's that most people don't really like change. So regardless of what the change would be, at least there's a some percentage of people that are going to complain regardless of what the change is, whether they change the race, whether they change the gender, whether they change the costume, whether they change uh, their middle name. It doesn't really matter. Whatever the change would be, people are going to complain. But I would say um, Thor is perhaps uh, an interesting one because arguably he's based in mythology um, which you know comes up a lot in what I've been reading online is well yeah but Thor is a Norse god and you, you can't mess with mythology except for the fact that every story Marvel's told about Thor has basically had nothing to do with the Norse mythology with the exception of maybe naming his hammer Mjolnir and, and you know as having Odin as a father that's about where it ends um, so I don't know like people are just bitchy that's 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 my point. I'm gonna just leave it there. I'm I'm done. That's my point. But uh, you got a lot of things going on right now with Thor. I mean, he's become really really popular in pop culture. Um, we we're looking at the, what third movie coming out in the near future. Um, you know, the, you got that cheese beef cake. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, uh, rocking the uh, the Goldilocks. Um, so, I mean, it's understandable that a lot of people are, like, freaking out about this status quo changing and aren't really fans of, you know, a female Thor. But if you think about it, if they ever did do this in the movies, you'd probably get someone pretty smoking hot and not many people would start complaining at that point. Well, with with the popularity of Thor right now in the movies, it's all the more reason to shake up the character in the comics so that people come in expecting Chris Hemsworth Thor, they get I don't know who Thor lady is, but they get Lady Thor and she's going to be different and they'll maybe stick around for different Thor if I mean, they, they'll be waiting for fake Chris Hemsworth Thor to come back, but that they, they'll be 
they'll tune in for the, the, the weirdness of the new experience. I mean, it's really interesting, because you kind of see how, like, with the two stories that have come out. So you have female Thor, and then you got Falcon becoming Captain America. And it kind of, like, goes along with the um, U.S. politics that occurred over the last, like, eight years, because you had uh, Barack Obama, a African-American who was running for president, and you had Hillary Clinton. And clearly you saw where the choice was in those two uh, situations. And people were apparently a lot more comfortable with um, a black male taking power rather than a female. And it's almost being echoed again in this situation where people are really not comfortable with this female taking a power position. And no one's batted an eye at the thought of Falcon becoming Captain America. Do you think no one's batted an eye? I mean, I haven't heard anything, but... Like, well, all I heard was the story, but it wasn't, like, as newsworthy as this. This has been rocketing all over the uh, airwaves. So I wouldn't say that no one, like, um, so actually Joe Casado appeared on um, the Stephen Colbert Report and, and actually made the big announcement. There was a little bit of a, a pop uh, in the, the sort of media about uh, the change, but... Um, to, to go back to my earlier point, this isn't the first time someone else has taken up the Captain uh, America mantle, nor is it actually the first time that there's been more than one Thor. But anyway, not to go down that path, but um, I would say that there has been some backlash. It's just it seems like there's been a lot of change lately, and Marvel's timing it all to happen a little bit at once. And obviously, Miss um, Marvel, um, uh, Kamala Khan, you know, the Pakistani uh, American uh, replacement for Miss Marvel. Uh, or not replacement, let me take that back, um, sort of new, you know, person taking up the mantle. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I think that change is good, and if we were not, um, in, sh in short, if we were telling the same stories over and over about the same Superman, about the same uh, Thor, we would run out of material pretty quickly back in the fifties, sixties, and seventies, and I think change has to happen to our favorite characters, not only in growth in their personality, but also in some of the situations that we see um, them appear in, or their foes, or whatever the case may be. It keeps it interesting. Um, Kyle, what do you think? What you haven't had? You haven't said much. I think you know the change is really good to have. It, you know, it gives us uh, opportunities for different stories. You know, you get to see. You know. How does a woman, you know, operate differently in, in the role of Thor than a man would if, if there is any difference? You know, how does, you know, having a black man be Captain America, how does he operate different? How does the public see him different? But I think at the end of the day, we all know this is comic books, and, and changes like this to the status quo won't last forever. So, you know, we can wait a year or five years or, or whatever the timeline is, and eventually, you know, Thor will be back, you know, Steve Rogers will be back as Captain America, and these characters will either move on to another role or they'll kind of fade back into the background again. So I think I think we should enjoy it while it lasts because I you know it's a, it's nice to get these shakeups, but I don't think it's ever going to be permanent. So what what about um, the introduction of new characters? Like obviously, um, aside from the, the change, you know, to counterbalance the point about changing characters, there has been uh, a distinct and concerted push to have. Uh, more characters of uh, you know minorities and of course um, more female characters in sort of lead roles in both comics and and cinema whether it's um, you know movies TV etc um, I think it's all great and it's it's happening uh, hopefully for the right reasons but what about um, what about the what's the difference between changing an established character or trying to modify uh, you know, associate a, a brand name like Captain America or Thor with now a minority or a, a female character or whatever. What's the difference between that, that and trying to build a new character? I have so much to say about this. <laughs> well, you get characters, but you get attached to characters who have been around for a very long time. So a Captain America, you develop this kind of relationship with the idea of Captain America. And so when somebody comes along and becomes the new Captain America, if your Captain America, like the one you grew up with, was Steve Rogers, then someone else in the role of Captain America is troubling to you because you want your Captain America. So I, I've experienced the same kind of frustration where uh, 
they've introduced a new Wally West in the new 52. The Wally West was the Flash. I mentioned this in the last episode where Wally West was the Flash from like 1986 until 2010. And you sort of, I grew attached to that Wally West, but then they've introduced a new Wally West who is a, a half half African American, half white, and presumably, we haven't actually seen his parents, but presumably, and um, it's, I don't mind that at all. It's not so much that the character has been changed as that when the character is changed from a white ginger kid to a teenage black kid, there has to be some kind of necessary change necessary change between like culturally whereas if you just have a new character like an entirely new character who is black or an entirely new like say steel like in uh, the reign of the superman you had steel show up and he's obviously not superman he's john henry irons but he takes on the role of a kind of superman and you don't care because he's not Superman. He's Steel, and you get the chance to develop that same relationship that you developed with Superman with Steel because it's it's not he's not a usurper. He's a he's a new buddy. That's kind of how I, I imagine it is. But it's I, I agree with you that all change is good. But as a comic fan and as most comic fans, I think we still resist. <laughs> It's a good point. So um, one other thing I would like to talk about, um, just a, sort of an adjunct to the idea of um, actually changing the character permanently is something I've seen a few times pop up in ca character stories, um, although usually supporting cast that I've seen this in, but anyway, it's a sad point. Um, an example from the Silver Age was Jimmy Olsen, who more than once, if I'm not mistaken, would dress in, in drag to... Uh, do undercover work or to, you know, just be in disguise to, you know, obtain some new information for Superman or something to that effect. Um, and then, you know, some some interesting stories came out of that and, and he learned, you know, lessons about how, you know, women were treated differently or were perceived or talked to or any of those types of things. So it's, it is, I think, an important story point and an important um, aspect of real life that needs to be not necessarily emulated but explored in in comics because I think comics are such obviously a great outlet for um, political statements or, or just to explore and discuss and and have those conversations uh, in a, uh, a fantasy realm um, without you know uh, being too politically um, aligned right so I don't know I think it's it, it, these are all important storylines like, Kyle what do you think about the whole concept of um, sort of uh, characters uh, in either, you know, cross-dressing or in drag or anything like that. Is that, is that, how, how have you seen that portrayed? Uh, well, it's actually not anything new. I mean, uh, Quality Comics had a character called Madaniel, uh, who was a, an actor, he was a guy, and his daughter was kidnapped. So um, to, to kind of get leads and track down his daughter, he dressed as an old woman. And, uh, you know, nobody expected, you know, a grandma to be able to kind of come in and, and you know, dismantle the, the lair or whatever of the bad guy. So, um, you know, we have an example from the 1940s of a man dressing as a woman. And uh, DC had a character, uh, the Red Tornado, uh, who was uh, a woman. She was a, I think she was a grocery store owner, uh, kind of um, saw the crime and the, the things going on in her neighborhood, but didn't think she could be taken seriously as a woman crime fighter. So she put a big uh, cooking pot on her head and uh, disguised herself as a man and went out and fought crime. And everybody, you know, took her seriously because they they thought she was a big strong man fighting crime. And I mean that that even that kind of has continued today. There's a, a book DC does now called Earth Two, and we have. Uh, a character that's traditionally uh, a man, uh, the Red Tornado. He's a robot, uh, a different Red Tornado. But uh, in this timeline or reality, uh, it's Lois Lane. She's been, you know, placed in the Red Tornado uh, robot uh, body. So, you know, we kind of get another another view of, you know, a character that we traditionally 
see as a male, not in this instance necessarily cross-dressing, but, uh, you know, a woman in what is usually, um, you know, thought of as a man's body. So, I mean, I think comics have done this, you know, exploring, you know, what happens when a man is, uh, you know, trying to disguise himself as a woman or vice versa for quite a while now. I want to go around one more time and just everybody get a, a quick sense for everybody, how everybody feels about the topics of um, gender bending and sort of uh, race lifting, or just sort of the terms used most often. Uh, Mike, what do you think? What's your final thought? You know what? I've always been one for change. I enjoy it, and I think stirring up things is a way to get, like, not any new viewers, but to just get the, the media, like, out there. I mean, it, it stirs that buzz, and uh, I'd like to see more of it. Let's keep it going. Rob, what are you thinking? I think it's good to have new characters who have the... I, I think it's good to put energy into making new characters who represent all races and sexes and whatever's genders. And But I think I don't want to see the characters that I've grown to love erased by them necessarily. <laughs> Kyle, what's your final thought? Uh, I kind of agree. I think, you know, it's good to have these, these new characters come in. It's good to see a different take once in a while. But I think you need to keep in mind that this is comics and things will go back to the status quo eventually. So, you know, enjoy the ride. And if your favorite character has been replaced, just wait and they'll be back. You are very, very, almost certainly right. Um, so uh, thanks for everybody for their opinions. Uh, I am about a thousand percent confident that this will be a somewhat contentious topic on our discussion so um, please chime in let us know what you think there was so many examples uh, of characters or scenarios that we haven't discussed so let us know in the comments below tell us why we're wrong in the in the comments and uh, join us in the extra scenes after the show oh before I go I actually do have one question for everybody um, when publishers make such changes does it does it have an overall positive effect on the comic book industry let us know Thanks for joining us. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.